Hello, my name is Alejandro Murillo with GSC, and today we will be taking a look at all the different types of two and a half axis milling features that you can define in SOLIDWORKS CAM. When it comes to CAM software, there are two types, feature-based and operation-based CAM. SOLIDWORKS CAM is a feature-based CAM software, which means we define a machinable feature first, essentially what we want to machine, and then decide how we wish to machine that feature. This gives us many automation capabilities, such as being able to use automatic feature recognition, as well as create and store custom strategies for machining those specific features. These automation capabilities allows us to quickly create a CAM program so that we can begin production. So let's take a look at a typical workflow in SOLIDWORKS CAM. Since it is a feature-based CAM software, the first thing we have to do is define a machinable feature. Uh, essentially what we want to machine, such as a pocket, a slot, a hole, and so on. After that, we then have to define how we wish to machine that feature by selecting an operation type, such as rough mill, contour mill, center drill, and so on. After that, then we can go in and define the specific cutting parameters, such as our feed speeds, step over, depth of cut, and so on. For this presentation, we're going to be focusing on different types of machinable features, milling machinable features that we can define in SOLIDWORKS CAM. In SOLIDWORKS CAM, there are two different types of machinable milling features that you can define. There are two and a half axis milling features and multi-surface features. Two and a half axis milling features are essentially simple prismatic features where the top and bottom of the feature are parallel and flat to uh, your mill part setup. Uh, think about your pockets, your holes, your slots, um, features that you would machine 80% of the time. Multi-surface features are features that contain complex uh, multi-directional surfaces. Uh, think of organic shapes or maybe the inside of a mold where there are essentially no sharp edges, it's all smooth. Uh, this would be considered a multi-surface feature. As stated before, two and a half axis features are essentially simple prismatic features that one would machine 80% of the time. Uh, what makes them a two and a half axis feature is essentially the top and bottom of the feature are flat and parallel to the mill part direction. Um, you can see there in the image on the right examples of what is considered in SOLIDWORKS CAM two and a half axis features. You have pockets, slots, uh, holes, bosses, and so on. Uh, typically these features are going to be defined using some sort of 2D profile and in the case of the curve feature a 3D profile. Uh, here I have a list of all the different feature types, uh, two and a half axis feature types uh, available in SOLIDWORKS CAM. There is a perimeter feature, a boss feature, a pocket feature, open pocket, corner slot, slot, hole, face, open profile, curve, and engraved feature. Uh, the only one that is a little bit unique would be the curve feature, which uh, I'll talk about later on. Uh, one thing to point out in the images there, you'll see that uh, the pockets do have uh, subcategories, uh, such as there's a rectangular, circular, irregular, or oblong shaped pockets. Uh, that uh, we don't have to do anything else to actually define them as, let's say, in a regular pocket. Uh, the software does that on its own. Uh, really, all you have to worry about is being able to define and select uh, the major feature types which are shown there in the PowerPoint. The other type of feature is what's called a multi-surface feature. Uh, once again, this presentation is not going to focus on these on these feature types, but essentially these features are uh, complex, are features that have complex surfaces or multi-directional surfaces. Um, the, the way you would define these features in SOLIDWORKS CAM is actually through the selection of surfaces instead of selecting uh, 2D or 3D profiles. Um, these are really meant to be machined using 3-axis, 4- and 5-axis uh, simultaneous toolpaths. Um, these features, uh, their, their geometry is not parallel to 
the mill part setup. So there you can see an example there. You have a mold that has this complex surface. Uh, that would be considered a multi-surface feature. And once again, we are not going to be focusing on this. We're going to be focusing on two and a half axis milling features. So the goal of this presentation is going to be to take a look at how to define uh, the different types of two and a half axis milling features, uh, which you can see the full list here. Um, we're going to go through each one of these and I'm going to show you an example of which each one of those and how we define them in SOLIDWORKS CAM. Before we actually jump into SOLIDWORKS CAM, let's talk about how these features are defined. So these features are defined using some sort of 2D profile uh, except for the curve feature which uses a 3D profile. But other than that, everything else has to be defined by first selecting some sort of 2D profile, which then is extruded to define the feature. Um, 2D profiles can be defined using sketches, planar part faces, or planar edges. Uh, if you select the planar face, essentially the system will select the outside boundary as your 2D profile. If you select planar edges, that'll be your 2D boundary. If you select a sketch, uh, that sketch will be your planar boundary or your outside boundary of your feature. Once you select a 2D profile, then you can go ahead and define the depth or how much the, how much the feature is going to be extruded. Uh, a couple requirements uh, for this to be considered a two and a half axis feature is that uh, the feature, the top and bottom of the feature must be flat and parallel to the current mill setup. The only exception is the curve feature, which uh, we'll discuss later on. Uh, these features can have uh, tapers as long as the taper is constant all around. Uh, and they can also have top and bottom uh, fillets or chamfers. The first two and a half axis milling feature that we'll learn how to define is the face feature. The face feature is meant to machine the top surface of your stock flat using more than likely a face mill. Uh, the toolpath will machine a planar face parallel to the mill part setup. Uh, you can select sketches, faces, and edges as the 2D profile. Uh, the 2D profile of the feature must form a non-intersecting closed loop. Uh, and the when you create your operations, uh, your toolpath, your toolpath will be able to machine past the boundary of the profile. Once you define these features, the allowable operations, essentially how you want to machine these features, uh, are face mill, rough mill, and contour mill. So if we jump into SOLIDWORKS CAM, we're going to take a look at how to define a face feature. So here you can see we have our mill part set up. We're going to machine in the top of the part. Uh, my coordinate system and my stock has already been defined. So you can see here my stock. If I turn it a little bit, you can see here that we have extra material uh, on the top of the part. And that's what we're going to want to face off. So in order to define features, uh, machinable, two and a half axis machinable milling features, you're going to right click the mill part setup and select two and a half axis feature. In this menu, the first thing it's going to ask you for is what kind of feature are you trying to define? You can see here we have pocket, slot, corner slot, boss, hole, open pocket, face feature, open profile, engrave, and curve feature. So all the features that I showed uh, in the slide previously. So we want to define what's called a face feature. Once we select the feature type, then we must define a 2D profile. 2D profiles can be defined using either sketches, uh, you can select model edges, or you can even um, select the face. Uh, you can actually select uh, uh, an individual face and the outer boundary of that face will be selected as the profile. So let me show you some examples. So I can select this face here and it's going to select the outer boundary of the face, which you can see there, uh, it being highlighted in dark blue. 
I can also instead select a sketch. So here we have the sketch here. Um, uh, if you look here, available sketches, you can actually select it from that menu and it will select the sketch entities as our 2D profile. And you can also select individual model edges. So if I was to select, let's say, for example, the, these model edges here, uh, because we have this convert to loop filter on, it actually went ahead and chained the model, all the model edges uh, that form a closed loop. So you can select a face, you can select a sketch, or you can select uh, model edges. In this case, I'm going to first show you uh, what happens if I select the face. So let's say I select this top face. And by default, it's going to select the boundary of uh, that face. After we, so we have selected our 2D profile, then we must select our end condition, essentially how deep that feature is going to get extruded. So here you might be like, well, hey, that's not my 2D profile that I chose. So let me first go ahead and turn off use stock extents and it'll make a little more sense. Uh, so there you can see that's the 2D profile. We selected the face. The 2D outer profile is what's selected as our 2D profile. So here, if we actually select blind, we can define the depth or height of our machinable feature that we wish to machine. Now, because we are actually trying to, this is kind of unique to the face feature, uh, if we're, since, since we are trying to machine the entire top surface of our stock, um, we can actually leverage this option, use stock extents. And instead of using the 2D profile of this face, we can actually use the 2D profile of our stock. And hence, that's what is happening here. Uh, now we're using the 2D profile of the stock. Now, as far as the height or depth of our machinable feature, we can control that manually using uh, blind end condition, or we can use the option called up to stock. And that will extrude our 2D profile up to the top of the stock. So then if I select OK, and I hover over the face feature, that's essentially what we're going to machine that that blue boundary uh, is what we're trying to machine. That is our face feature. If I go ahead and generate an operation plan really quick and generate the toolpath and go ahead and simulate it, you'll see essentially what is happening. We are machining the face feature we defined. The next feature we'll take a look at is the perimeter feature. Uh, essentially what the perimeter feature does is it allow you to machine the outside per perimeter or outside silhouette of your part. Uh, this is very similar to a boss and open pocket feature, which we'll learn how to create in a moment, except that the boundary of the feature is automatically detected. Uh, so there's a little intelligence behind it. Uh, so once again, the silhouette of the part is selected as the features 2D profile automatically. Uh, you don't have to actually select the 2D profile. Um, you'll also notice in the image there that the outside rectangle is dotted, which means that uh, the tool can actually machine past uh, that boundary. Um, and usually you can define this as uh, a perimeter feature has two options, boss or open pocket, which essentially means uh, you want to remove all the stock material or you just want to machine around the silhouette. Um, so it won't, it will leave extra stock material. It'll just try to machine uh, exactly around the silhouette. So that's the difference between boss and open pocket. The lobo operation, so how you want to machine this feature uh, after you, you create and define it are rough mill and contour mill. So if you jump back into SolidWorks CAD, 
I'm going to go to my Camworks feature tree. And just like before, I'm going to right click my mill part setup. And the part perimeter feature is uh, probably the only two and a half axis feature that has its uh, separate command. Um, it is really still a two and a half axis feature, but it just kind of has its own uh, individual uh, command. So as you can see, as soon as I select uh, the perimeter feature, you'll see that it automatically detects the outside boundary of the part. So I don't have to select the 2D profile. And essentially what it's telling me that it's going to machine everything outside of that 2D boundary. And if you see these dotted lines here, that's telling the software that, hey, you can also, the tool can travel in and out of that outside boundary in order to, in order to machine that perimeter profile. Um, here you can see uh, on the perimeter feature menu, there's two types, boss and open pocket. Uh, what that does is boss will only machine uh, the perimeter itself, uh, does not care how much stock is left over. Open pocket will machine the perimeter and any additional stock that is left over around the perimeter. So we're going to leave it as open pocket. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick rough for our operation strategy. And we want to machine. Uh, for our end condition, by default, it's going to machine all the way to the bottom of the stock. If we only want to machine, let's say, to uh, the bottom of the, let's say we want to manually define what to machine to, you can see here how it adjusts. So just for example purposes, I'll say I'll just want to machine till there. And hit OK. So you can see there, if I hover over, there you can see the perimeter feature, what we're going to machine. We're going to machine the outside perimeter. If I go ahead and generate an operational plan and generate a toolpath, you'll see what it's doing. It's just machining the outside perimeter. I'll go ahead and simulate this. So there you can see it's only machining the perimeter and the tool is allowed to go past uh, that dotted boundary you saw earlier. We can speed this up. So that is the perimeter feature. The next two and a half axis feature that we'll look at is the open pocket feature. What this feature does is it allows a user to essentially machine an open area while avoiding some sort of boss or island that is in the middle of the feature. Uh, you, with open pocket feature, the tool itself can uh, machine beyond the boundary. You can see the little dollar lines there. So we're going to machine everything. Uh, within that dotted within that boundary, uh, while avoiding that center boss area, which you can see highlighted blue. Uh, sketches, faces, and edges can be selected for the 2D profile, uh, and the 2D profile of the feature must form a non-intersecting closed loop. Uh, when it comes to actually creating a toolpath and machining, uh, the allowable operations are rough mill and contour mill. So if we jump back into SOLIDWORKS CAM, so far we've faced uh, the feature, the stock. Uh, then we uh, machined out the perimeter by creating a perimeter feature. Next, what we want to do is we want to machine all the material that is between this top face and this top face. Uh, essentially, uh, we're going to create a feature uh, between those two faces in order to machine that, that area uh, while avoiding the outside of this boss. And it'll make a little more sense in a moment. In order to do this, I'm actually gonna have to create a sketch. Now, for open pocket features, once again, you can use sketch geometry, you can use model edges, or um, you can use, you can select a face and the outer boundary will be selected. Uh, in my case, the best method, the best way to do this is to actually create my own sketch. 
Uh, and this is very useful for lots of applications. Uh, you can create whatever sketch you want to create your machinable feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on this top face. I'm going to create a, my 2D profile. It's just going to be a rectangle. So this is going to serve as my 2D profile. I'm going to rename this sketch. Open profile sketch. And in a moment, you'll see why this is going to become handy. If I go back to my feature tree, and I'm going to go ahead and create a two and a half axis feature. I'm going to select the open pocket feature. And I have to select the 2D profile for my 2D profile. I'm actually going to select that sketch I just created. You can see there are highlights. Now I have to define how far it's going to extrude. So remember, I want to cut everything between this top face and this top face. So when I extrude my 2D profile, I'm going to select this top face here. So, um, so you can see my 2D profile is extruded all the way down to this top face. Now I have this use stock extends checked on, so that's why you see that boundary going a little further out. If I actually take that off, you can see now it's uh, my 2D profile is what I chose for my 2D sketch. So now it's only going to machine that area. But if I machine that area, I'm also going to be machining the top of this boss, which I don't want to do. So in order to avoid it, let me pick a rush strategy here really quick. In order to avoid it, I'm going to define an island. So that's the unique thing about the open pocket feature is you can define islands to avoid. So I'm going to go ahead and you can pick you can do the you can pick a sketch, you can pick a 2D pro, you can pick model edges or you can even pick a sketch to define an island. In my case, I'm just going to pick the face and it picks that 2D profile. So that solid blue boundary, that's what it's going to avoid. And I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. If I go ahead and generate my operational plan and generate a toolpath, you'll see that it machines everything except that island feature. So once again, open pocket feature allows you to machine an area while avoiding some sort of island or boss. So let's go ahead and take a look at the simulation. So open pocket feature allows you to machine past the 2D profile. The cutter was able to go in and out of the 2D profile, which was the outside rectangle, and it was able to avoid a center islander boss. Next, I'm going to show you how to define a boss feature. Uh, boss features are essentially features uh, that create a, a raised area. So these you define when you're trying to machine around a raised area. Uh, in order to define uh, this feature, the 2D profile of this feature, you can select sketches, faces, and edges. Uh, the 2D profile must form a non-intersecting closed loop. If rough cuts are required around a boss, uh, you should use the open pocket feature instead, which we just learned how to use. Uh, if you're just trying to do a quick finish pass on it, that's when you would define this as a boss feature. And that is because boss features, the only allowable operations are contour mill, uh, which essentially is a finishing operation. It is not, uh, you do not have access to a rough, rough uh, mill operation, hence why uh, you really would only use this for finishing applications. Um, if you are trying to create an external thread on a boss, uh, or some sort of uh, outside raised material, uh, you technically can also create thread mill operations for this. So next we're going to define a boss feature. So I'll go ahead and go to my spill setup, create a two and a half axis feature. Under feature type, we're going to select boss. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pick my 2D profile. In this case, I can pick individual model edges if I want. And you can see that they loop around due to the convert to loop option. I can also just select the entire face if I want to. 
and it selects the outer silhouette as my 2D profile. For my end condition, how much I want to extrude this feature, uh, I can define it uh, manually by using the blind option so I can control how far it goes. Uh, a lot of the times, if you actually just select the face, it will just extrude it to that face, which is what I'm about to do. Notice here for the end condition that up to face is automatically selected whenever you select the face. So that right there is my boss feature that I'm going to machine around. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. So for my strategy, by the way, uh, these are the default strategies. We'll go ahead and just select the finish strategy, which is, is just going to create a contour mill operation. So I'll go ahead and quickly generate an operation plan. You can see it creates a contour mill operation, generate the tool path, and let's go ahead and simulate this and see what it looks like. You can see there just machines around the boss. Now, once again, this probably wouldn't be the order I would actually machine this part. This is just to show you examples, so keep that in mind. Obviously, uh, we've probably dug into uh, this probably wouldn't be the best way to machine uh, this part. So, um, as I said, keep that in mind. So that is a boss feature. Pretty straightforward. Uh, usually, you, once again, you only have access to the, a contour mill operation which really, for the most part, you can use it for roughing, but really it's just used for finishing. Uh, if you do want to rough out the area around a boss, I would use the open pocket. Uh, I would define it as an open pocket feature instead. Next, I'll show you how to define a pocket feature. As the name implies, it's meant for uh, defining uh, some sort of recess or pocket or closed pocket area. Uh, so for you want to, so for when you want to machine a closed pocket, uh, to define the 2D profile, you can select sketches, faces, or edges. The 2D profile must form a non-intersecting closed loop. The allowable operations are rough mill, contour mill, and if it's a circular profile, you could also, for example, if you have a, a hole feature, you could also use all hole machining operations. So we'll go ahead and create a closed pocket feature. So we're going to right click our setup, create a two and a half axis feature. For feature type, we're going to select pocket. Next, we must select our 2D profile. So I'll go ahead and select this bottom face. For my end condition, essentially how far I want to extrude, that 2D profile, uh, I can define it manually once again, or better yet, if I just select a face, I will extrude it up to that face. And once again, for that condition, notice how the up to face option gets automatically selected. For my strategy, I'm just gonna pick rough. Once again, this is not exactly how I would machine it. This is just to show you some examples. And I'll go ahead and hit okay. So you can see here, a pocket feature was created. Uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM does distinguish between irregular pockets, uh, rectangular pockets, circular pockets, and so on. Uh, uh, for our purposes, we don't have to, we don't care as long as it's a pocket, you define it to be the same way. I'll go ahead and generate an operational plan. Go ahead and generate a tool path. You can see here the tool path, it's machining that pocket area that we defined. And we'll go ahead and simulate it. So that's where we left off. I'll go ahead and hit play. Speed that up a bit. And you can see there, we've machined our pocket feature. The next feature type that we'll learn how to define is a slot feature. A slot feature is essentially a pocket with one edge open to the outside of the part. Uh, if you look in the image there, uh, essentially the tool where you see the little dotted lines, that's the open area. 
or open edge that the cutting tool is open to travel in and out of. Um, so machining is extended beyond the open segment of the slot. What that means is the tool can go past that dotted line or that dotted edge. Uh, in order to define the 2D profile of the slot feature, you can select sketches, faces, and edges for the 2D profile. Uh, the 2D profile must form a non-intersecting closed loop. Uh, and Camworks does distinguish between rectangular and irregular slots. So when you create them, subslots will be called irregular, other, other ones will be called rectangular. Uh, for your purposes, it doesn't really matter. Um, the allowable operations uh, to machine a slot feature are rough mill and contour mill. So let's go ahead and create a slot feature. So I'll go to my setup. I'll create a two and a half axis feature for my feature type. I'm gonna go ahead and select a slot. Then I must pick my 2D profile. Once again, you could select edges, you can select the sketch, or you can select the face and the outer boundary will be selected. In my case, I'll go ahead and select this face. And you can see that the outer boundary is selected for my 2D profile. For my end condition, how much I want to extrude that, once again, you could go blind and define a specific distance, or the way I like to do it is I'll just select the face and it's going to get extruded up to that face. Uh, once again, if you look at the end condition, that up to face option gets automatically selected. If you look inside here, notice that an open edge is automatically selected. Uh, the way you control this, actually, not that I have to do it at this moment. Uh, is under edit pr feature profiles. This is where you can actually select which segments contain uh, are, are open. Essentially, the tool can travel in and out of. So this segment here of your 2D profile, that is going to be our open segment that our tool can travel in and out of. If you want to change that, you can actually, there's this command called air segment where you can actually change it to a closed segment or an air segment, which is an open segment. In my case, I'll leave it as is. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. Well, actually, before that, for my strategy, I'm just going to pick a, a quick rough strategy. So it's going to create a rough mill operation really quick. I'll go ahead and select OK. So you can see a slot feature was created. Uh, in this case, this would be an irregular slot feature. For our purposes, we don't care if it's regular, uh, what it's called, but it's a slot feature. We'll go ahead and generate an operation plan and generate a tool path. You can see there it's machining our slot and the tool is allowed to cross that open edge. We'll go ahead and simulate it. Once again, notice the tool is able to travel outside of the open edge. And I'll play that back one more time. So that is a slot feature. Next is the quarter slot feature. So a quarter slot feature is similar to a slot feature except you have two or more edges that are open to the outside of the part. So if you look in the image there, uh, you have at least two edges that the tool, the cutting tool can actually travel beyond. Um, whereas the regular slot feature, you only have one edge. So machining is extended beyond the open segments of the slot. Uh, sketches, faces, and edges can be selected for the 2D profile. The 2D profile must form a non-intersecting closed loop. Uh, and Camworks does distinguish between rectangular and irregular corner slots. The allowable operations for machining a corner slot feature are rough mill and contour mill. So once again, really, this is a slot feature, except you have two or more um, air segments or edges that the tool, the cutting tool can travel in and out of. So let's go ahead and create a quarter slot feature. So we're going to go over to our Camworks feature tree. We're going to go to our setup and create a two and a half axis feature. And this time we're going to create a corner slot feature. 
for our 2D profile, we can select edge geometry of the model, we can select a sketch, or we can select a face in the outer boundary will be selected as the 2D profile. So I'll go ahead and select a face. For my end condition, how much I want to extrude that 2D profile, I'm going to go ahead and also select a face. And if you actually look at it, you'll notice that I have at least two air segments or open edges. And once again, these are controlled under edit feature profiles. You can always convert these uh, to non-air segments if you want to using this command here. And for my strategy, I'm just going to pick a roughing strategy, which will create a rough mill operation. And I'll hit OK. I'll go ahead and generate an operational plan and generate a toolpath. You can see there, the tool is able to travel in and out of those two air segments. I'll go ahead and simulate this. And as you saw, I'll repeat one more time, the cutting tool is able to travel in and out of those two air segments. And that is a corner slot feature. Next, we'll take a look at how to create a hole feature. Hole feature, as the name implies, is uh, a feature uh, that represents some sort of blind or through hole. Uh, in order to define the 2D profile of this feature, it has to be a circular non-intersecting closed loop. Uh, and you can select sketches, faces, or model edges for your 2D profile. The allowable operations are essentially all your hole operations, such as center drill, drill, countersink, floor, ream, tap. Uh, you also can use rough mill, contour mill, and thread mill operations. So I'll go ahead and go into my CamWorks feature tree. I'm going to go ahead and go into my part setup and create a two and a half axis feature. And the feature type, as discussed, that we're going to create is a whole feature. I'll go ahead and select my 2D profile. Once again, the 2D profile does have to be a circular profile for a whole feature. In my case, I'll go ahead and select this model edge. And how much do I want to extrude this 2D profile? Uh, I can manually define it here, a specific distance. Uh, there's also the up to face option if I want to extrude all the way down to here. In this case, it doesn't work because the bottom is not a flat face. So the bottom does have to be a flat face in order to use the up to face option. Uh, in my case, uh, we can actually use something up to vertex. And select that bottom point there and I'll extrude it all the way up to there. So I'll stick with that. Um, for my strategy here, uh, we'll pick a drill strategy, which essentially will create a center drill and a drill operation. Now, in case you weren't aware, um, you can create individual operations for these features. In my case, I have uh, pre safe strategies. Uh, that can create multiple operations at once. In this case, we're going to just stick with the drill strategy. And you can see a whole feature was created. Let's go ahead and generate an operational plan. You can see here a center drill and drill operation were created. I'll go ahead and generate the toolpath. And let's go ahead and simulate this. In my case, I'm only going to simulate the drill operation. So there you can see it's already showing the center drill. Here is the drill operation. So that is how to define a whole feature. The next type of feature that we'll take a look at is the open profile feature. 
This allows users to machine along part edges or sketch lines. So for example, if I just wanted to machine, uh, let's say a finish pass along this edge here, highlighted in blue, you would use what's called an open profile feature. Uh, when defining an open profile feature, you can use sketches, faces, and edges as your 2D profile. Uh, for this feature, the 2D profile must be open uh, with non-intersecting edges. Uh, sketches must be parallel to current part setup if you're using a sketch uh, as your 2D profile, and allowable operations are contour mill. So we'll go ahead and jump over to our CamWorks feature tree. Uh, we'll go to our mill part setup and we'll create a two and a half axis feature. And for our feature type, we're gonna select open profile. Now open profile is unique because it's the only feature so far um, that does not require a closed uh, profile. You can actually have an open profile. Um, in this case, what we want to do is we want to machine along this surface. So for our 2D profile, we can actually select individual edges, like you see here. And this is going to essentially serve as the guide for our toolpath. You can also select faces instead. Or if you have a sketch, uh, an open sketch, you can select that as well. So let's go, go go ahead and go to our end condition. So how much do we want to extrude our 2D profile? Once again, you can manually define the depth. In my case, as always, I like typically, if I can, I just select the face. And for our strategy, I'm just going to pick a finish strategy, which is going to create a contour mill operation. If I go ahead and generate an operation, so here you can see it created an open profile feature. You can go ahead and generate the operational plan, generate the tool path, and you can see what it does. It essentially allows me to machine using an open profile as my guide. Uh, let's go ahead and simulate this. And go ahead and hit play. And obviously our tool is quite large. We could probably use a smaller tool. Uh, so let's go ahead and select a smaller tool so that it looks a little better. So we'll pick a six millimeter end mill. And we'll simulate it once more. In this case, it's doing it in two step downs. So once again, this is probably typically used for um, finish uh, as a finish operation. So that is the open profile feature. The next feature type is a curve feature. A curve feature allows users to machine a feature using a 3D profile. So far, all of our features only allowed us to use 2D profiles. Uh, the curve feature is one of those features that actually allows you to use a 3D profile instead. This feature is essentially the equivalent of an open profile feature, but for 3D profiles instead of 2D profiles. The 3D profile of the feature can be open or closed and non-intersecting or self-intersecting. Sketches, faces, and edges can be selected for the 3D profile. Uh, a, a very common use case for using, for defining this type of feature is for when you're trying to chamfer uh, the edges of, uh, of, a, of a complex 3D profile edge. If you look at the image there, you can see an example of that, uh, which I'm gonna show in a moment. We're gonna try to chamfer the top edge of that feature. And as you can see, that profile is not flat. It moves in all three dimensions. Hence, it's a 3D profile. The allowable operations for curve feature are contour mill. So let's go ahead and create a curve feature. Now in order 
for you to be able to clearly see what the curve feature is doing, uh, I went ahead and already created a and machined a multi-surface feature, essentially machined the top of this part so that you can see what the curve feature is doing. We're essentially going to be chamfering the outer 3D profile of the feature. Uh, if we take a look at the simulation really fast, so let's hop over to our operation tree. So what I did is I created a multi-surface feature and I, and I uh, also created an operation and toolpath uh, to machine that feature. So once again, multi-surface features are actually meant to be used on you know, multi-directional surfaces, which is what we have here. What our curve feature is going to do or allow us to do is we are going to chamfer all around the edge of that feature. So let's go ahead and jump into our feature tree. I'll go ahead and create a two and a half axis feature. For my feature type, I'm gonna create a curve feature. For my 3D profile, I'll go ahead and select the edge. I can also select the part face instead if I want to, and the outer boundary of the which is that 3d profile will be selected or i can also select a 3d profile of a sketch or a, a 3d sketch i should say uh if i want to for my end condition i'm going to go ahead and give it 20 thousandths for my strategy i have a strategy called edge break which will automatically create a contour mill operation using a countersink tool. You can also use a ball end mill as well. Instead, once again, all I'm trying to do here is uh, break the sharp edge around the 3D profile. Now, one thing to notice here, notice that my arrow is pointing to the inside. I actually want to want it pointing to the outside if I'm gonna be chamfering this or else the tool is gonna to be in the inside. So if you go to edit feature profiles, you can actually change the direction to cut. And I'll go ahead and select OK. So there is our curve feature. I'll go ahead and generate an operational plan. A contour mill operation is created using a countersink tool. And I'll go ahead and generate the tool path. And you can see what it did there. If I go ahead and simulate the toolpath, my countersink tool is going to go around and chamfer the 3D profile that we defined. So you can see how it's following uh, that 3D profile in all three directions. in order to create that chamfer. So that's one good use case for the curve feature. The last two and a half axis feature we'll take a look at is the engrave feature. The engrave feature allows users to machine engraving onto a part, typically utilizing some sort of uh, sketch text. Uh, a uh, planar collection of edges or a sketch must be selected. The 2D profile of the feature can be open or closed and non intersecting or self intersecting. The allowable sketch entities includes lines, arcs, splines, and text objects. And finally, sketches must be parallel to the current part setup. The allowable operations for this feature are contour mill. So essentially, this is how you're able to create engraving on a flat surface. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to engrave GSC on that top surface. Uh, and once again, we can do this by first creating what's called an engrave feature. So in order to create an engrave feature, I mean, mo most people are going to be uh, engraving some sort of text. 
So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a sketch with text in it. Here I have already a sketch with some text in it. It says GSC. Notice that I am using a single point font. So in SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS, there should be already a single point font. If I double click this font, so I can edit it, the font that I am using is called CAMWORKS. Uh, another single point font, uh, if you have SOLIDWORKS CAM, is called Old Simple Sans. OC, that is also a single point font. You hit OK, you can see there it's still a single point font. It, all the other fonts in here are not single point, so this may cause an issue. So, for example, there you can see it's going to try to engrave, follow along all those lines. Um, so you can do that as well if you want to, or in my case, I just want a single point font. So I'll go ahead and select the CamWorks font. And hit OK. One thing to make sure is make sure there is no other uh, solid lines uh, in this text. Uh, you can have construction lines, but you cannot have any other solid lines here that you don't want to engrave. So you should only have uh the text the text should all, should be the only items that um that you want to engrave or else it's going to try to machine those extra lines as well so there is my sketch i call the gsc engraving sketch if i go over to my camworks feature tree i'll go ahead and create a two and a half axis feature my feature type is going to be engrave feature and in my case here you can see that all the sketches all my sketches show up and since i've already named it this makes it very easy to identify so i'm gonna go ahead and select gsc engraving sketch and you can see there it selects that the the text so that's going to be my 2d profile for my end condition how deep do i want to engrave this uh in my case i just want to engrave it i don't know maybe like twenty thousandths, maybe if that so there you can see that's essentially how deep we're going to engrave it for my strategy here i'm just going to pick one of the default strategies called engrave that's going to create a contour mill operation i'll go ahead and select ok let's go ahead and generate the operational plan so sorry if i go back here you can see it it did create an engrave feature so once I hit operation, create operational plan, it creates a contour mill operation. I'll generate the tool path. You can see it right there. Let's go ahead and simulate it to see what this looks like. So that's where we left off. If we go ahead and hit play. Unfortunately, we never removed all the material from that top surface. So you don't clearly see what is being engraved. Well, actually, you can see it right there. So the only reason it looks a bit funny is we never removed the rest of the material here, extra material that's on the top surface of the part. But there you can see that it was able to clearly engrave GSC on there. So that is how you create an engraved feature. So that concludes our presentation. As you saw, it is very easy to define two and a half axis milling machinable features in SOLIDWORKS CAM. You simply have to know the different types and what their purpose is. If you're interested in additional content relating to SOLIDWORKS CAM or any other SOLIDWORKS product, Feel free to visit us at gsc-3d.com. This has been Alejandro with GSC. Thanks for watching.